This live video is starting. I have a feeling it already started, but I'm waiting. Am I on yet? Yeah, hey, I am on. So, thank you for getting on here and being a part of this tonight. Um, just want to be a big shout out to um, the Rock Church. Um, today we, I know I came on early, I came on early for a reason, um, so I can give announcements or talk a little bit. Um, we set up our fellowship hall as a sanctuary. Uh, what a powerful service, uh, my wife and sister um, Gina Evans led worship tonight. It's almost like we're uh, back in our sanctuary, but um, you that don't know and you that do know that February of last year, or yeah, February of last year, just a few days ago, uh, we hit that during that big freeze. Um, it froze a pipeline in our um, water fountain and water saturated our church. Unfortunately, the insurance company has not wanted to take care of us and do what it needs to be done. We had the estimates that was presented to them. They were wanting to give us just a few thousand dollars for an $80,000 job. And um, so, unfortunately, they... After almost eight months, 10 months maybe, or well, six to eight months, we end up having to get a law firm because they would refuse to even hear us, even though we have been very faithful in making our payments. And I've been here 16, 17 years, and we have never missed a month of faithfulness. Now, before that, I can't say, uh, but I have a feeling, I forget how many years we actually been under this insurance company. And unfortunately, um, they have not done us right, but the Lord's helping us with that. But anyhow, we had a, a service and uh, most of the church body was there, um, came. There were some still watch, would want to watch online, even though I didn't put online this morning. Normally we do. Um, but what I felt for the church was just kind of more private for the church. And um, as it being Bishop Sunday, that's what I chose to do. And, and um, I asked my wife if I could... Um, go ahead and speak tonight. And there's some things I want to speak about. It's come some of the things I did this morning, but in a different style and different realm. Uh, but it was very powerful. God really moved the worship, the, the, the things that we felt. Even though we had great times in our care group meetings on Sunday in the different areas and even at the church there at the Fellowship Hall, it was wonderful. But this was a little bit different. And um, we are excited because we, the insurance company has finally uh, allowing some more adjusters come in to give them an estimate. Well, um, we're not going to accept uh, only but what we want, so pray that they will um, do what they are supposed to do um, to people that have been faithful to them with work, um, with paying their bills and stuff. But through that, um, the church has grown, um, believe it or not, but it has grown. We've seen people come and and uh, be a part um, of the church, visitors coming in. I can't remember, I know we didn't have any visitors today, um, but uh, we've had some uh, people that have just started coming within this last year, were there, and i um, very thankful. Now, we're still having care groups instead of having a Bible study. There will still be a Bible study online, um, but there will be a care group in, like it was on Sunday, but it's going to be one is going to be actually on Thursday night. And that's where Pastor Evans at um, his apartment complex, I can't think of the name of it. But if you ever want a message, if you're interested and Wednesdays don't work for you, but Thursdays do, his apartment's right beside Leo Martin Chevrolet. I can't. Urban Crest. Urban Crest. And um, it's a very beautiful complex it's got a nice place that he's able to go in um, the community center and um, he has a, a good group of people that go there and one of the reasons why they're on a thursday night because there's a young doctor um, that's been a part and he's wasn't able to come he's been on sundays but he's not able to be there on wednesday night so he said he, he i mean he would be able to do thursday very adjustable because it's a care group so they're doing on 
on Thursday at 7, I believe. Um, then also we are having one at the Fellowship Hall at the Rock Church here on 540 South Main Street. Thank you, Sister Evans, for Urban Crest Apartments on there. She's um, the wife of Pastor Evans, and you're more than welcome to join them. Um, the one at the church uh, will be at 7 p.m. That still will be at uh, Fellowship Hall. Um, our evangelist, Brother Barber, is going to be teaching that one. And um, also, um, um, I believe Shirley Smith has one. She's in the Richwood uh, apartment complex. I don't think it's called Richwood, complex, but it's in the Richwood area. And they will start at 7. And they are at... Um, I forget the name of their apartment complex, Sister Evans, if you know that one, you might put that on there too. But um, again, if you're interested in these, she's more in the Richwood, right on the border, Richwood and Clute, but um, um, she has one in her apartment, I believe that's on Wednesday at 7 also. So we have um, three care groups, and you're more than welcome to be a part of it, and I believe Brother Barber is going to be uh, posting their care group online. Um, but it's so much nicer to be there. Um, some are not able. We do have several that are on um, COVID watch or um, isolation. We have several that are um, shut in right now because of that. And that's what really it's mainly for. It's not for people to be lazy and not to come. Um, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your willingness to be a part of the Rock Church, and um, God bless you. Um, very excited about what God's going to do with the building. Uh, very excited about that. I think we're going to continue with the care groups even after uh, the building gets complete. And our um, goal is um, what the insurance is supposed to do, let them do, but also we're wanting to uh, remodel the rest of the church uh, out of our uh, building fund. And if you're not giving in the building fund, let me encourage you to give in the building fund and start giving so we can be debt-free when that time is done. Thank you so much. God bless you. Uh, Pastor Evans is doing a wonderful job at the Clute campus. Thank you for that. I'm thankful for Beaverton, um, Sister Barkley, and we're thankful for um, our North Carolina group, Rosa I'm um, very thankful for that. I uh, communicated to her not too long ago. Excited about in the future coming and baptizing more people, uh, being a part, and it'd be really be nice if we even could set up a service style um, service with them and, um, and just enjoy maybe a, a few days of fellowship, teachings, and things. So, um, Sister Rose, that'd be really fun to do whenever that's more convenient for your group and for y'all to be able to do something like that. So we're very thankful Sister Evans put something on there. Um, Sister, oh, I guess she, she's going to the war room. I don't know what the reason is that for, but she was doing care groups. I guess she's decided to go ahead and go into the war room. So um, that group is going there. So there's only two care groups, one in um, Lake Jackson and one in Clute. So thank you, Sister um, Evans for letting me know that I did not know that if I did know that I forgot about it I'm sorry Sister Villaveda it was good seeing you today thank you for your faithfulness just kind of looking I won't be able to do this um, throughout my lesson but um, it's good to see Mary Campbell on here thank you for being on here Sandy my cousin it's good to see you or good to see you on here Brother Clinte missed you today thank you for being on here Ricardo, it's good to see you. Also, God bless you. We've missed you. Hopefully, see you come back soon. And your wife and your child. I'm glad that God is working that out for you. Um, I want to go to Psalms 23. As you see on the comments, I think I got Psalms 23. I might have accidentally deleted it to all the group. I'm sorry if I did that. Huh? It's there. It's there. My wife says it's there. Okay, great. Um, but we're on Psalms 23. I'm going to read probably the scripture, and then I'm going to give you a little definition of it. Um, you'll understand why at the end. And I am so thankful God is giving the church a chance to get ready. Um, his time is coming soon that he's coming for his people, and coming for the children of God in this world will be forever changed after he takes his church away. don't want to be left behind. I want to go with his second coming. And I want to be there with him. Um, I want to be a part of that. Um, Psalms 23, 
Um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, the words of Psalm 23 give great comfort to believers who experience painful and difficult times. I have read Psalms 23 um, one chapter one, I mean, verse one through six at funerals. I've, I've quoted it at bedsides at people that are in comas. Um, I've talked, I've, I've quoted it and used it in reference to people that are, in, um, have trouble. I've used it in prisons, visiting inmates. And then also as a chaplain, I used it quite often, but as you, and obviously, as you know, Psalms 22 was before that. And the context on Psalms 22 was focused on the death of the Messiah. And then, obviously, Psalms 24 is after Psalms 23, which um, it is the king of glory. And the content is that. But Psalms 23 can be read as a reference to the Messiah's hope as he walked through the valley of the shadow of death, verse 4. I'm going to give a verse by verse, and then I'm going to read it again, and I'm going to give you a little bit what I felt at about 4 o'clock this morning, the Lord laid upon my heart to tell you. To every, um, in verse 2, it says, He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. To say that sheep were made to lie down meant that they had eaten their fill. And the sheep... When they eat, they stand, or they stood. But sheep were frightened by rapid water. If you know anything about sheep, they get frightened very quickly and would not drink. So he would make them lie down so they would be able to drink and calm down and not be afraid with all, they thought, chaos and the rapids and all the, uh, the sounds and noise. I'm going to get somewhere on that here in a minute uh, about some of that. But um, we're, I need you to understand, we're referred to as sheep in God's fold. And at times we get so excited, we, get, we hear something different, or, and it scares us. And all the Lord's trying to do is that he fills our stomach with his word. He fills us, our stomach with his love. He wants us to lay down and be able to be refreshed by having some water um, for us. He storeth my soul, verse 3, He storeth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And listen to this. This might be a little bit um, lengthy, a little bit, um, hopefully, it helps, gives you more understanding about some of these scriptures. It's not just something to comfort. It is something to comfort, but there's a deeper meaning than just reading at a funeral. Um, compared to the reference to soul, um, life, which in Psalms 20, 22 and 20 and 29, had the life of the Messiah um, not been restored, listen to me, not been restored, would have met the Lord, had not kept his promise to David. This would have reflected negatively on his character as suggested by the words for his, for, uh, for his namesake, for his reputation. You know, and as you, you mentioned somebody's name, there's sometimes there's a couple thoughts that come, especially if you know them well, or you know him at a distance. Um, somebody at work says, Jeff Smith, what do they think of? Oh, he's lazy, he's late at work all the time. Something all him, all him always comes into their minds. He's, he's, um, um, well, I said lazy, whatever, but it or, or could it be? Oh, he's there before um, time. It, uh, for me, on time to me is um, I've got to be at the college at seven in the morning. On time to me is six thirty, no later than six forty-five a.m. But again, when I as I'm speaking this, I know there were some guys that get there at seven. Well, not my group, but I'm going to use my first shift. Our guys, all my all our guys do the same thing as I do. But there are people, if, say, I called off sick or somebody else, somebody's replacing, oh, who's taking Smith's place? Such and such person. Oh, they won't get here till about 701, 702, or, or even later, or at 7. So there's a thought um, that automatically comes. 
And when you use the name of Jesus, what do you think of? Well, we think of his power of his name. We think of um, his virtue, his healing. I do. And I think about who he is. His name is applied to my baptism for the fact that the Bible says, baptize him in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is the name of the Father? Jesus. Some people think we're only Je we're Jesus only people. I've heard that many. T I've heard that a few times in my life. We're really greater than Je we're the ones that really know who the Father is, and we really know who the Son is and who the Holy Ghost is. And there is a great um, um, understanding that you you can. We we do a Bible study online from Genesis to Revelation, and you could see biblically not. Um, the nominal way or uh, what my belief is, but biblically what I'm talking about, the name of the Father is Jesus and the name of the Son is Jesus. It's, it's, it's just right down the line. But anyhow, when you say a name of a person, what is your thought? Um, you can make another name, another man and say, oh, he was a, he's a veteran. Um, oh, he's a good husband or he's a, um, a child molester. You know, whatever the situation is, the name is something very important. And so this was being said here at this place that his name is what it says it is. Um, he did and he will arise again. Psalms 23 and 4 says, e, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me. Now listen to me. I'm trying to give a little more depth to those verses um, there's a whole lot more. I'm just giving you a very basic. I'm trying not to be too long, but there's just a basic that I'm giving you. Maybe, uh, hopefully, it'll cause you to go into the scriptures and study it out for yourself. Psalms 23, uh, 4 again, um, is read as the Masonic, Masonic um, Psalms, the valley of the shadow of death, refers to the Messiah's experience on the cross. Even in the midst of this experience, the Messiah would fear no evil, for the Lord was with him, comforting him in his rod and his staff, and in the and in, in, in shepherds, in the sheep between shepherd and sheep relationship, the rod and the staff represented the shepherd's presence, his protection, and his guidance. So when you hear that scripture, understand that Jesus Christ himself, the Messiah, the, uh, the Messiah was being comforted. That's what the scripture, in Psalms 23 and 4, this is what David was referring to even before they, God was given him the understanding of this scripture. Oh, my son came on. Thank the Lord is with us. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, no, that's not my son. That's must be my wife um, putting on there. I'm sorry. At first I saw, I thought it was Justin Smith and Jeffrey Smith. That's my wife. We share the same page. But through that that part, Jesus in Psalms 23 and 4, and then at the end I'm going to read it again, the whole without all this extra stuff. But then I want to explain to you what I felt the Lord wanted what the church to know. Um, Psalms 23 and 5 says, uh, Thou preparest a table before the me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Let me see if there's any comments that I need to, my wife's trying to help me with. Hey, Hope, my sister-in-law's on here. It's good to see you on here. Thank you. The Lord is with us. I'm, Brent might be watching with you. Say, Brent, my brother. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, say, thank you, Lord. Okay. Um, uh, Psalms uh, 5, 23 and 5. Thou pre preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. The phrase in this is the presence of my enemies. Can refer to the Messiah, uh, Messiah's experience on the, um, experience on the cross. There's so many, um, and I'm just going to go through this very quickly, just a little bit of, uh, of scripture, and it goes into Psalm, it's from Psalms 22, so you can actually go into that and look at that. But Psalms 22, 7 through 8, 11 through 13, 16 through 18, 20 through 21. 
That's the verses in Psalms 22 that refers to what, I'm, what this scripture actually talks about. The table was a symbol of provision and blessings, as was the overflowing cup in Psalm 16 and 5. The statement, thou anointest my head, listen to me, with oil reminds us the Messiah was the anointed one. Wow, that's powerful. Psalms 23 and 6. Again, this is a great um, um, chapter for bedsides for people that are ill, um, sick, um, and um, it's been, I, I use it quite a bit during funerals and everything, but there is a deeper meaning than just the words, and I'm trying to help us with that. And then also it's going to tie in, the Lord uh, led, led me to this scripture at 4 o'clock this morning. Well, actually before that, but he wouldn't let me get away uh, by it. And I um, felt to, to sp speak to the, the Sunday morning group at uh, Rock Church include where Pastor Evan Faster heard a little bit different version of what I'm saying right now, but um, um, it was basically the same thing. The word translated, um, Psalms, uh, I read it, Psalms 23 and 6, says, surely in goodness and mercy shall follow me after all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word translate follows um, R-A-D-A-P-H in the Hebrew meant pursue or chase. Goodness and mercy would not be passive in relation to the Messiah. His life would be char characterized by the presence of these virtues. The house of the Lord was the temple in Jerusalem. The temple was not even built when David was alive. So Psalms 23 could not have had its ultimate fulfillment with David. To translate Hebrew, Yashab, um, I'd have to spell all these words, but there's um, one, two, then the following two, three, four, five, six other tr translations of this text in the Hebrew. The Hebrew text reads, I will return to the house of the Lord. Um, hopefully I'm not losing you when I'm trying to talk about the Hebrew of it. You, I, I'm not going to try to butcher the name of it. You wouldn't know if I didn't know how to say it, but I just don't feel like trying to act like I do know. Um, the anointed one, the temple. The Masonic um, image is seen elsewhere in the Old Testament. In Zechariah 9, 8, and 9, Malachi 3, and 1, the most met immediate um, context, this prepares the reader in Psalms 24, where when the King of Glory, the Messiah, enters the everlasting doors in the holy place in the hill of the Lord. See Psalms 24, 3, 7, and 9. The Messiah will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, further signifying that Psalms 23 does not have its ultimate fulfillment in David. Hopefully that gave you a little bit more understanding. Again, I just touched enough maybe to give you a hunger or even a little confusion to study it out for yourself so that you can have more of a clearer understanding. Why do we want to just believe what the man that's behind the pulpit or in front of the camera says and just let it rest? That word of God is for us to be able to seek out for ourselves with fear and trembling. And I'm thankful that God does do that. Um, I'm very appreciative, appreciative of that. Um, now, I'm going to go into a little bit, just a very little bit, what I talked to the church today. We're entering... Um, Jan uh, the 2022, the year 2022, we just left 2021. We were in 2020. It seemed like 2020, the cart turned upside down and all the things that would happen. And we hear, and there, you know, I even had one of our, our people message me and said, thank you for the message today. I was wondering why so many preachers seemed to be aggravated or upset or, or mad while they were preaching, but it wasn't that. You gave me clarity and understanding that they're so um, impressed by God to to prepare the church because he's coming back very soon. 
And usually the church is the one that's left. If you look at Noah time, only eight souls were saved. And I, I won't go into that like I did at, at the church today. But eight souls were saved over 100 plus years, 120 years, but I'll just say 100 plus years. Noah preached, he built, and, and built something that nobody else has ever seen before. And talked about things that's never been seen before. The flood. Yeah, they've seen um, the dew of the day because the water coming up from the from the earth with the dew and the and the, um, and the night with the humidity and all that. So they they seen the dew, but they never saw rainfall before. And when a man is talking about a flood and rain and and the, and the bowels of the earth would open, um, they thought he was crazy. Only eight people were saved in that time. That was then they came into a different dispensation. I'm, I'm going somewhere and I'm going to try to be very quick with it. Again, I'm not getting you the in-depth part of what was given in, um, at the church. You say, well, why don't you? I wish you had been at the church. I know some might not be able to. Hope, she's in Florida. Um, other, um, Sister Diane, she's in um, um, Oregon. Um, Sister Rose is in um, 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 North Carolina. And I see others from Ohio and I see others from other different states. And, I, and I'm sorry for that, but you that are around us, which I see some of you that are around us are watching that you weren't there Sunday morning. And there's other, I mean, some of you because you got COVID or you've been, you're not able to come, understandable. Um, but through that process, then the next scene that comes up is that um, when Jesus was born of a virgin, we just celebrated Christmas and we really know that Christmas Day was not his birth. It was probably more in June or month of July that he was actually born in our calendar years. But we celebrated at that time and um, really it hasn't become a celebration of birth anymore. It's been a celebration of Santa Claus and, and whatever. But through that process, he was born. Why was he born? He was born that he could come back. He was still in that same dispensation. They were still sacrificing oxen. They were still doing the things at the temple. That the dispensation wasn't ended yet, and then end until after the uh, uh, of the return of Jesus Christ in, in the evidence of, of the Holy Ghost being put upon the people. But through that place, during that time, the church people, the ones that would read in and in, in, in the scribes and the Pharisees would would um, speak in their synagogues and, and to their people. They told them about the Messiah coming. They even told them where the Messiah was going to be born. He told them when, where, what area, how his life would be and all that. And in the process of that, while they were telling him, they, he was there. But they didn't see it. And they kept going through the religious traditions. They kept going through the religious format not really seeing what was happening at that time. We're living at the end times, and we have the tendency, human beings have the tendency to adjust and adapt, and we don't see biblically this is the end time. But if you look in the scriptures, and we shouldn't be just wanting to get right because it is at the end of the time of the world, but we we really need, and, 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 and I've told the church this, and I've told people all over the country this, when I have given my testimony, when I first came into the church, came back into the church, when I left the church and came back, I came back out of fear because I didn't want to go to hell. I, I came back out of um, um, being scared. But you can't stay in something because of fear. You develop a love. And I found fell in love with Jesus, and that's all I concerned about is I want to live for him. I want to love him. If you see my comments on here, that's actually my wife commenting. I'm not amen in myself. Thank you, babe, for doing that. But I wanted people to know that I'm not amen in myself. I'm not that type of guy. That, oh, amen. Matter of fact, I can't even watch myself after everything's done. But through the process of it, um, we the church, when he was, I mean, if you read the scriptures, he was so hard to the people in the church. I used the example, uh, one of the examples I used about they dragged this poor woman that was caught in adultery 
and they talked about what should we do, and they were trying to catch him, and, and, and the law says he had to stone her, and all the things that went on, and Jesus didn't say a word, and he bowed down on his knees, and he started writing in the dust. Some people think, and I have actually preached it before, possibly that God was writing down the sins of those men. Maybe that they even slept with that woman themselves that he put the day and the time on there. And when he arose from there, his, her accusers were gone. But when he looked at the world, he looked at the soul that needed to be saved, not the one that says they're saved in a church. I don't care what denomination you are. I'm bringing this all to all denominations. I'm bringing it to the apostolic people. I'm bringing it to people that uh, are uh, other people. I'll just put it that way. Um, other denominations. Uh, but I'm bringing this to how many of us are not seeing what God's trying to do. I believe 2020, 2021, and the church knows include when I was pastor there, for years I spoke about what God would I, I did not know how he was going to do it, but he was going to bring the church to a place of repentance and to get in their hearts right and, 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 and um, different things that are around here. I'm not going to name the companies and stuff. I said, but they're not your God and everything because there's a lot of money in this area. Some of you struggle financially in the areas that you're at and all stuff. We don't, they don't seem like we struggle as much as other places. There's still uh, money here, um, all the things that are going on. But through that process, they still, we, our church, still is going through the motions and thinking, oh, it'll get better, and things will rebound, and things will get better. It's not going to get better. God's getting his church ready for a time that things are going, you thought 2020 made your world upside down. I think 2023 is going to be something that's just going to cause us it's for all of us to bow our knee. But how much greater would it be that from 2020 to all the way through 2022 that we have sold out ourselves to the Lord where we don't have to bow our knee by screaming, God, I'm forgive me, I'm here. Instead of that when we bow our knee that we say, you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and you are the one that loves me. Thank you for giving me food to eat, shelter to put my head down, car to drive, a tank full of gas, and all the things that needs to be. And people are going to wonder, how are you blessed when you're going through the same thing and looks like the, the things that uh, you don't have, the things that we have, even that we don't, but you're being taken care of. Why? It's because we prepared our hearts and our life to give it un conditionally to him without saying no and you do it my way God or I'm not going to be a child of God I surrender myself to my father and as my father desires for me to do I want to do how much greater would that be for you and for your family I've mentioned to our church I'm bringing things back on the men um, it, uh, there's a big type of deal that talks about um, if women are in church, they, their children have a 30% chance of being saved. If men, the, the men only are in church, the husband, I mean, the father's in church by himself, the wife's not. They, the, the children have a 67% chance of being saved. But if the husband leads the wife and the wife and the hu husband are together, they have close to a 90%. The children... I'm looking at as a father, now as a grandfather, for me to give my life to him over and over again. My, I want my son to be saved. Now, I know he's 35 years old. And you know in the last three, four years, he went through hell and a lot of things that he went through. But he never, did he, did he struggle? Yes. But he never left knowing who Jesus is. And so many people leave the church. But the thing is, they're leaving the church because they never build a relationship with him. If they would build a relationship with him, they would realize the church has pastors that make mistakes because we're human. That church members make mistakes because we're human. That we're not, they, they talk about being judged, but they're the ones that judge the church or the men of God greater than what they even want to live. 
So if we get our hearts right with him, no matter what happens in our life, no matter who hurts us or attacks us, whatever situation, family, whatever happens in our families will never cause our eyes to get off of him. I want my eyes to be upon him. I, I, I don't want to make heaven my home just because I want to escape, escape hell now. I want to make heaven my home because I love my heavenly father. And I want him to be pleased. And I want him to look at me and say, well, well done, my good and faithful servant, my son, come join me in paradise. And he even told when he says, I never knew you. He was talking to people that professed that he was their father, but they did it how they wanted to do it. And he said, I never knew you. But we laid hands on the sick in your name and they were healed. We cast out devils in your name and they were delivered. We had mega churches. We have churches. We had so much going on. We had all the things that you put, you put it in. And he looked at me and he said, I, I don't know you. Why? Because they did not submit their will to the Father. The Father, our Heavenly Father, will never send us to hell. Our actions take us there. He gives us a way and escape, just like he did Noah back in his day. They gave a way and escape, but there was only one way, and there's still only one way for an escape, and that's to submit our will to him. My bottom line, I wanted to tell, and I told our church, the church included, and Pastor Evans, you're doing a fabulous job. Sister Evans, you're doing a fabulous job. The people still love their old bishop, and I thank you for that. I'm not that old, but um, when you say bishop, everybody thinks you're old. I'm only 62. Now, my wife is a lot, a lot younger than I am, so I married a young woman. Um, she's not a teenager, though. But through, but through that process, they they... They, I, I want us to listen to the voice. I want us to seek him. I want us to understand. And I'm very thankful. I was talking about Pastor and Sister Ev. They're leading the Rock Church of Clute. And I know Sister um, um, Barkley and um, Sister Rosa are doing the same thing in, in, in Oregon and North Carolina. They're not a relationship with Bishop, not a relationship with them but a relationship with him. If we seek ye first the kingdom, we don't have to worry about church attendance. We don't have to worry about tithes. We don't have to worry about offerings. We don't have to worry about any of that because it's not a, a, a law that has to be done, but it's because, oh, that's my heavenly father. I want to do it. Wow, I'm going 37 minutes and 55 seconds. But um, obviously I did get on here a little early and my little announcements ran past um, 7 o'clock. But I, I love you dearly. You that are not a part of any church at all. I'm not talking to church people right now. You that are not a part of any church at all. I know religion, religion on TV, maybe people at your work has given you a bad taste in your mouth and you think ah, they're, they're no different than I am. And that's true. There are some that way. But if you get, if you find a church, I'll just say like Pastor Evan Pastors, and you get a hold of people like that. And if you want to know wherever you're at and wherever you live, I don't care where it is. I probably got a friend that lives close to you or part I know that you get message me. I can help you lead and guide you to someone to help and train you and teach you. You have to have a pastor to be saved. The Bible talks about it. You have to have fellowship with one another. But he's, he's being used of God to help lead you to have more understanding where you, um, how to walk this walk. So um, please feel free to um, message me. You that are backsliders, come home. Come home. I'm a backslider. I've been a backslider. And if we be honest with you, most of everybody in our churches are being backslider. Maybe not to the point of what I did, obviously. But if you're sitting in church and you're cold and indifferent and you're not really paying attention, that's backslidden. You gotta get you gotta get your heart right with God. I beg of you, get your heart right with God. You that are waiting for this and you're almost impatient, let God do it. 
allow him to open them. Quit trying to open doors, Jeff Smith. I mean, uh, quit trying to open doors. Let God open the doors. And when he shuts the door, walk away from it. God bless you. Heavenly Father, I love you today. I thank you, Lord, for the, the words of the Holy Ghost that have spoken through me. I pray them that have ears to hear, let them hear. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that we just won't be hearers of the word, but we'll become doers of the word. Any that are in this, this services there in the future now that desire a Bible study, they desire a Bible and they don't have one, if they feel free to message me, maybe I can help them get one. Maybe I could send them a Bible study or I could refer them to our YouTube channel, TRC Family, from um, exploring God's word from Genesis to Revelation where they can start being a part of. I pray, Lord Jesus, that your will will be done in their hearts or life. I pray for the spirit of forgiveness to come over us as we're asking you to forgive us of our sins and our, ne our neglect of putting you first upon to the church that we have neglected putting you first and we made everything else a priority before you. I ask you, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that you will forgive us and we'll seek ye first the kingdom. And I pray, Lord, that your perfect will will be done. I love the rock church. I love your people. And I love the people of yours that they don't know that they have a chance to be saved. God, lead me to them and help me, Lord Jesus, to bring your word to them. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Dave, did I miss any announcements? Anything? Now, I am part of South Texas. Um, I've been asked to pray at noon tomorrow. It will be on this page here also, my page. But it's on South Texas Facebook page. I don't know the. my wife was going to put in the comments. Um, my wife started a little off today, very powerful. It looks like a, a, over the last time I looked, over five, 600 people have connected to it. And, um, and hundred um, ten, ten teens, I don't know, hundreds yet, but there's a bunch of people have shared that page. And, and please share this page if you feel that it might be a benefit to somebody else. Join us. Um, and it's going to be 30 days of prayer and fasting. Our South Texas district is being involved in, and with my wife being the coordinator of South Texas Prayer, um, she's uniting with our role network prayer of our organization, which that's her head, and I'm very thankful for our organization that really wants to seek out God first. God bless you. Um, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. And sorry for the...